Hello everyone and welcome back for another tutorial in Unreal Engine 4. In this episode we are going to make a start on our spline uh, mini series where we look at splines and their many uses. In this episode we're going to look at uh, using splines to make moving platforms. So here I've set up a couple of examples already. So here's a lift. Okay, And when I get off of it, it'll rise and reset back down below. And here's a more traversal moving platform okay again when I jump off of it it will reverse back through the thing so you can use this to make any kind of moving platform um, uh, and it's not too difficult so let's begin so let me just first of all clear our previous examples away from the map so I don't get confused and what you're going to need to do is make a new blueprint actor so click on add new blueprint class and choose actor and you want to name it something appropriate and open it up now this actor will have a couple of components so on the component list on the left hand side you want to click on add component and the first thing we're going to add is a static mesh click on the static mesh component and in the right hand side you will see the static mesh details and here it says none from the drop down choose a mesh that you've previously brought in uh, so I brought in my moving platform mesh like so the next component we're going to need is, is a box collision so I click on add component box collision and this will act as the trigger to determine whether or not the player is on the platform and if they are on the platform we're going to move the platform so move your box on so it's on top of the platform and you want to resize it so it fits better on the whole thing now an important thing to note is that your box collision is actually a child of your static mesh so when the static mesh moves so does the box it should look like this with the static mesh here and the box down and to the right if it isn't if it looks like this then you need to, all you need to do is click and drag and drop it on top of the static mesh this means that the box is now a child to the static mesh and so when it moves the box will move with it too the last component is going to be the spline so type in spline and you want the one that just says spline not spline mesh now the spline itself we don't want to be a child of the static mesh because we don't want it to move at the same time as the box uh, as the as the platform so click and drag it on top of the default scene route and click attach so your final component list should look something like this with that done we're now going to go into the event graph we need to get rid of all these because we're not going to use any of these and we're going to use a uh, begin overlap on the box uh, trigger to do that we click on the box and then right click in the middle and go uh, begin overlap and you'll see add on component begin overlap the first thing we need to do is check whether or not the actor that's com that is in the trigger is actually the player so with other actors selected drag this out and you want to cast this to the in this case the third person character but this will be the name of whatever the character uh, actor your player is playing as. With that being successful, we will then go off and make a timeline. So type in add timeline. You, it, will, it will ask you to uh, uh, name the timeline. So I'm going to name mine uh, move platform. And double click on it. This will open up the timeline, allowing you to edit it. At the moment, it's blank, so we're going to add a couple of well, add one track to it. You can see you've got a float track, vector track, event track, and color track. We want a float track. Name your track. I'm going to name mine um, travel distance. The length up here will determine how long it takes to get from one end to the other. 
So if you want it to be a little bit different, you can do, you just type in whatever you want to be here. For this, I'm just going to leave it as 5. To add a point onto our graph, this is a graph editor, um, we shift click to add a point. Once a point is selected, we can determine its time and its value. In the time, enter 0, and in the value, enter 0. This means it will start at 0, 0. Shift click again. This time, with time as 5, which is the end of the graph, make value equal to 1. And you'll see a line now appear on the graph. If you click these two buttons here, this will allow you to zoom it so you can see the whole entire graph. Now this is what we call a linear graph, meaning that it's going to increase a set amount over time. It's not going to get faster or slower, just a set speed. I want my platform to accelerate and decelerate. To do that, we select both of our points, which you can do by just click dragging, right click and choose auto. This will give it a nice curve. This is an acceleration curve and a deceleration curve. When we're done here, we click compile and then we go back to our event graph. So click on the event graph tab. You can now see that travel distance is now a node or a pin rather on our move platform timeline node. This is called a scalar value because it goes zero between zero and one. And what we're going to do is we can use this to determine how far along the path we are at. Zero being the start and one being the end. To get that, we drag on our spline. So drag spline component onto your event graph. And then from spline, choose get length you'll see get spline length. You want to multiply the travel distance with float by float, multiply it by the spline length. This means it will get the full value of the distance. So if we are at travel distance of zero, this will be zero. If we're at the travel distance of 0.5, we'll get halfway along the spline length which is exactly what we want. Okay, the next bit is to turn this into um, affecting the static mesh component. So drag the static mesh component out onto the event graph. And from here, we're going to set world uh, location. From update on the timeline, connect it to that set world location and you'll be asking for a new location in the world. To do that, we're gonna drag out from, uh, sorry, drag another spline component in, and from there, we want to get location at distance along spline. The distance comes from this float here. Now your return value will go into new location. The coordinate space you want to change from local to world because this is going to set a world location, not a local location. We want to make this making sure we get the world coordinates from the spline. With that done, the next step is to set its rotation. So I want my mesh, uh, my platform, sorry, to rotate along with the spline. To do that. You want to drag another static mesh onto the field, onto the event graph, sorry. And from there, you want to set relative rotation. And what this means, this will add on this rotation onto the current rotation that you've previously set. So the new rotation comes from the spline again. So from spline, type in get rotation at distance along spline. And again, distance is hooked into that multiply. This time we'll leave it as local, and the rotation here will go into this rotation here. Click compile, and we're gonna close, and put our platform into our world. So the way splines work, is that you'll see a line here. This is the spline. A spline essentially has a line that has points that determine its shape. Okay, so this has two points with one section. 
and I can move, grab and move these points. So if I grab the end point here and move it, these red marks are the tangents which handle the curvature of the line. If I want to add more points to our line, I just click the uh, Alt key and drag it away to make a duplicate point. And again, I can move this, I can also rotate it to add a bend to our curve. Now, it's not perfect because as you can see, it's more like a flying car where it just rises up and down, okay? And also it doesn't return back to its starting position yet. So let's fix those couple of things. Go back into your moving platform. And the first thing we're going to do is fix the reverse. So on the timeline node, you'll actually notice it has a reverse input and reverse from end input. So similar to the begin overlap, we also get, want to get an end overlap. So again, click on the box component, right click in the graph, and you want to tap in end overlap. And you'll see add on component end overlap. And we want to cast it again to a third person from other actor. Because we want to check to make sure that we are actually the player. And you want to drag that onto reverse. Click compile. And we'll now see when I jump onto it and then jump off of it, it'll reverse back to its starting position. Now notice how the rotation is a bit weird. Okay, That's because it is rotating all the axes to follow the line. Okay, so it's following it perfectly, which is not what we want. Okay, so from our blueprint, where we've got make, uh, we've got new rotation coming from our rotation at distance, we want to actually break that off, and with new rotation, right click on it and choose split, and on return value, right click and split, and the only ones you want to hook up this time are just the Z and the X, leaving Y alone. Click compile, play, and you see how it keeps it it keeps it flat and rotates it round. Okay. Now, one thing you may want to uh, solve as well. If I were to drag this in here and rotate it first of all, and then make it do its thing. You notice how it snaps moves? That's because it needs to always be facing forward to match the line. So to do that, we're going to fix that with a begin play. So right click, begin play. And the static mesh you want to drag out and set relative rotation. And the new rotation will come from the spline. So drag the spline point out and choose get rotation at distance. We want distance to remain at zero because that's the start of the line. And just right click, split both of these again and hook them all up. Uh, from Y. So at the start, it's going to rotate immediately whichever way the line is going. Okay. So if I rise that up, and there's your moving platform. Now obviously this is only working with the trigger, but if you want it to be automatically moving platforms, it's a very simple, similar setup. Essentially, you don't have the these begin overlaps and end overlaps you don't need to cast it at all you just set up the begin play to move the platform so if i were to um uh if i could do begin play instead go here this will play the platform automatically at start of the mat at start of the, the level and you can make them loop in reverse as well so making reverse up. So you've got loop here, 
auto play and you also got reverse reverse men so you can do whatever you want with this you can drag the finished out to activate another custom thing so I can drag it out uh, let's do a custom event and name it reverse And we go reverse here and we go finished custom uh we'll just do reverse like so and you see it goes up and then it reverses back down okay to make it loop loop there and that's how you make it loop okay so you could do like um, it spawning from one end to the other like a conveyor belt type of thing oh but if you wanted to go to the end and reverse back and start again again um, when it's, once it's done reverse go to finished uh, we want to then set it back okay but you can twist you can play with and with this however you like you decide what you want to do here okay and that's basically it that would do for the first episode in splines um, and how they can be used to make moving platforms in the next episode we'll start looking at how to make meshes with splines and make roads and pipes and things like that um, but thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time if you've liked this video and you want to see the next part of this video already, you can see it right now on Patreon. If you want to support me and my videos and my content and my game development, you can do it over at Patreon from $1 a month. You can get access to videos two weeks ahead of time and an insight into my game development I'm doing at the moment with my own project. Thank you for all the support so far and I'll uh, see you next time. Bye bye. Hi everyone, if you do like these videos and you have liked what I've done in the past and want to see what else I can do, um, all your support is greatly appreciated on YouTube. However, I do have a Patreon set up as well where you can support me even further. Money donated by yourselves will help me make better videos and better content, um, and more frequently, hopefully. Plus, it will help me develop my own projects. Currently, I'm in a project at the moment, and I'll hopefully be able to share that with you uh, sh soon. Um, if you do so, just, uh, choose to donate and subscribe to us on Patreon, uh, you do get access to videos two weeks ahead of time, plus there are many other rewards available to you too. So head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, and uh, thank you for your support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.